Good morning, everyone. Today is July 10th. Let's get down to some crime news. Susan Lorenz is supposed to be in court today for some pretrial hearings. However, I just checked and I don't see anything up yet about it. So I'll keep checking back on that and then we'll come back to it. In the meantime, I wanted to introduce a case that we have not talked about before that is quite, quite disturbing. Let's start with this. This is a strange, strange girl. 28 year old Mia Bailey. This is footage of her being apprehended. I have no idea what she's doing out there. Maybe she was trying to run. She's accused of killing her parents. This is in Southern Utah. This was uh, mid-June, late June. Probably the 25th, I think, of June. Because this all started hitting the news cycles on the tw June 26th. was when they found them, I believe. We're going to watch more. We're going to get some more details on this. She's accused of shooting her parents to death in their Washington City, Utah home, reportedly telling police she would do it again. She's charged with two counts of first degree aggravated murder. Okay, it occurred on June the 18th. Her parents were Joseph and Gail Bailey. She's also accused of first degree felony attempted aggravated murder for allegedly trying to shoot her brother through a door at the family's home. She's also charged with multiple first-degree felony counts of felony discharge of a firearm resulting in serious bodily injury. She's 
she's been assigned a public defender. She has been in court since this arrest, so we're going to watch some of that here in just a moment. What could your parents possibly have done that would have been so horrible? In our world today, we just can't tolerate one another, can we? So sad. All right, let's get to a news report. All right, going in depth tonight on that double homicide investigation out of Washington County, the suspect Mia Bailey arrested after evading law enforcement for more than 12 hours. Here's how things went down on Tuesday night in Washington City. You can head that way. Attend three on each of the Would you have a gunshot call? No coming in. Possible vehicle involved is going to be a yellow Kia Soul. Just drove off southbound. Or he's unable to see anything or anybody. I believe the parents were shot upstairs in the home. Sounds like somebody came into the RP's house. We now have a party calling in from the actual home. Pretty chaotic. Possibly the RP's brother came into the RP's house, shot their parents upstairs. Suspect is going to be a call in, goes by Mia. Again, suspect vehicle on this yellow key is both. And we're just now our suspect is going to be that call in Bailey, who's also involved in a brandishing on the 5th of this month. It looks like he was actually the caller. Like he called in that somebody at his work pulled a gun on him. Girl, 667, clear the air. I've got one down. 667, copy one down in 1908. All units account is clear for emergency shuffle. Control, we got two buddies down. Contact LT. Sounds like it may have been that he ditched the phone. They can hear other vehicles going by. It's an open line within six meters. So I put the timestamp up there on those subtitles so you could see all of this developed in a matter of six minutes. Bailey's parents were found deceased with multiple gunshot wounds. Police said that Bailey admitted to shooting both people. Actually also tried to shoot through a locked door towards another family member who was inside trying to escape that home. The shooting happened again on Tuesday night. Bailey, however, was not apprehended until Wednesday morning. Here's how that went down. They're finding that there's a field that the suspect went into. The caller no longer has a visual. It's across from me. I have somebody in between us in that field closer to the block wall. We have the suspect car over here by the gravel pile. Okay, let's do reverse 911 shelter in place in this immediate area. Everybody be quiet. We've got verbal contact with the suspect. We can't quite understand what she's trying to tell us. But uh, she's asked about surrender and asked about penalties. Um, from the second story, we can see the female. Um, it's possible that she's got a gun in her right hand, uh, pointing it towards her head. Drone has eyes on. She does have an object to her head. She's saying that she's going to shift location. Stand by. Units be ready for a possible surrender. She dropped the gun, slides it back. All right, she's showing the gun's empty. She just dropped it on the ground. So that sequence is about 45 minutes in time, scrunched down into about a minute of what took place there. That was the part they didn't show on the very first one, probably because these days, you guys, in case you're not aware, um, YouTube has been really, really, really funny about showing any kind of weapons. Where they were actually able to arrest Bailey. Now, according to court documents... Mia has no remorse for the actions and crimes committed, saying in the probable cause affidavit written by police, quote, I would do it again. I hate them, <gasps> referring to the parents. Washington City Police speaking to our Kristen McPeak about how the disturbing act of violence impacts the local community. Obviously, I think it brings awareness of your safety. Um, this situation is, is tragic and you know, you never know when something like this is going to happen. And so it's just just being diligent, being good neighbors, knowing. I mean, our, our community down here is so tight knit from all the calls we received from last night throughout today of trying to locate Mia, um, <clears throat> everybody working together. So I think it, it just brings out awareness of, hey, we need to be all working together as a community, public safety, citizens, EMS, everybody in, 
in our whole community just coming together and, and providing that information on on things that we all need to know. So it's been been a good experience in the fact that showing that our community is still tight knit. You know, we're we're a growing community down here, and it's we're getting bigger. We face bigger challenges every day, and so. But knowing that we still have that small town feel and, and things we want to do of that nature, it, it makes it nice when the community comes together and, and supports first responders and things that on the, the job we're trying to do to keep everybody safe. Yeah. What's one challenge that you faced in this incident and what did you learn um, from it? Challenges are just that, that these evolve rapidly and the scope and distance that they can be, be in. We've had multiple crime scene areas. We've had multiple locations of sightings of Mia where we need to be with with manpower and, and personnel and and trying to keep that communication aspect up and running um, I think that's some of the major challenges of all the little pieces that we need to put together to make sure we're doing the right things and where we need to be for a safe outcome like this one and so that that to me is, is a big challenge and I think that's in every major incident like this is keeping that communication open and working and just taking it step by step and, and getting to the right conclusion that was Lieutenant Corey Klotz with the Washington City Police Department. Bailey, meanwhile, facing a number of charges, including three counts of aggravated murder, one count of aggravated burglary, and then multiple counts of felony discharge of a firearm. Bailey currently in the Purgatory Correctional Facility, and that is in Hurricane, under observation right now. Some questions about Mia Bailey. You heard in the audio from dispatchers, police initially were looking for the suspect, Colin Troy Bailey, who goes by Mia. Mia, who is transgender, has been in the process of transitioning from man to woman. Last year in July, Colin Troy Bailey submitted with a local court for a name and a gender change. That same month, Colin's brother submitted a restraining order with the court, which was dismissed a few months later. It's believed that was the same brother who was in the home behind the door that Mia shot through. Ultimately, the name change and gender change application was indeed signed by a judge in August after a court hearing again, August, 2023. They did a really good report on that one. Now we could watch this court appearance. You know, I, I wondered if she was a girl transitioning to a guy. I don't know why I thought that. That's why we kept hearing them use the word, the name Colin. I, when they said Colin, I thought they were talking about her brother. I wonder if she was getting a lot of negative feedback from her family because of her transitioning. Uh, let's look at these photos real quick. These are the photos I had up earlier. Mm, strange. Strange, 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 you guys. Now, I want to go back over here, and I want to, it says new details emerge about the protective order against her, her, him, they, whatever, accused of murdering her parents. So, let's watch this report. Thanks. The KSL investigators have obtained exclusive new details on a protective order filed against Mia Bailey. Bailey's accused of murdering her parents last month in St. George. New specialist Garna Mejia joins us now with the exclusive update. Garna? Arresting documents indicate Mia Bailey's family members were afraid of her. That fear, according to court hearings, started months ago. Her brother filing a protective order against her. Ten months before 28-year-old Mia Bailey allegedly walked into her parents' home, opened fire, and killed them out of hate, her brother, Corey son David Bailey, petitioned a judge for a protective order against her. Can you tell me what you would like to do? I disagree with the allegation, and I'd like to have a hearing, please. Mia, a transgender woman, had not yet changed her legal name from Colin Troy Bailey. The details of the protective order are confidential, but KSL investigator Daniela Rivera uncovered the audio from three court hearings in the case, shedding new light on Mia's strained family relationships. This is Corey Sen's attorney. His mom's, you know, kind of stuck in this hard spot of not being able to see. Even. Right. And right. My client is fine with if we could maybe possibly set mom up as a as an intermediary to possibly schedule appointments. So if, if uh, Colin, you know, wants to come over for Sunday dinner, 
my clients buying the dashi. Corey Sen was living at home with his parents in St. George. He proposed leaving when Mia stopped by. But by the following hearing, both sides agreed to work things out, and Corison moved to dismiss the case without prejudice. Yes, Your Honor, the parties have come to an agreement. They're going to have a personal conduct agreement in place. On June 18th, the nightmares became a reality. In addition to killing her parents, Mia is accused of trying to murder her brother and his wife. She allegedly showed no remorse and told officers she would, quote, do it again. And Mia Bailey is due back in court tomorrow. She's facing several charges, including two counts of aggravated murder and one count of attempted aggravated murder. I'm Garna Mejia, KSL 5 News. What I want to know is where are they going to put her with the men? They're going to put her with the women. So I, I was looking up here. KUTV did address how they classify inmates when they come in. And so I'll read this to you guys really quickly. Inmates booked into jail always go through a process to be classified and placed properly according to what they need. Once booked into jail, suspects go through an observation period to determine which population they will be sent to while waiting to be for their case to be adjudicated. Every observation is different based on various factors, such as the severity of the crime and the mental health of the accused. They said, this is Sergeant Lu Lucas Alfred of the Washington County Sheriff's Office said, we look at physical health, mental health, where that person is. We also look at the alleged charges that are being filed against the individual. Okay, so before I even finish reading this article, I'm going to say my guess is you somebody like this, you would have to put them somewhere where they can't be around other prisoners, men or women. Alfred would not speak about the booking process for any specific inmate, including Bailey, but he did say every inmate that comes in goes through a classification process. He said before they even get back into any cells whatsoever, nurses meet us at the door and begin asking questions of anybody brought into the facility. That process determines where an inmate will end up in the jail. When asked how they plan to place Bailey, seeing as she identifies as transgender, Alfred would not comment specifically on that case. He said, I can understand the curiosity. We definitely do. But due to our facility, we don't talk about specifics in housing. We don't talk about transportation of anybody within our facility. The severity of the crimes play into where an inmate is placed. If somebody has a violent history and can continue to do that, that's definitely going to make them more segregated. When asked, officials would not comment on how long it would take to classify Bailey, who is being held without bail. Let's go over now to the first court appearance. Good morning. Welcome to 5th District Court. The matter before the court is State of Utah versus Mia Bailey, case number 24150193. Ms. Bailey, can you hear me? I'm not, not able to hear you. Let's see now. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Ms. Bailey, you are appearing before the court at an initial event. You have been charged with the following offenses. Count one, aggravated murder, domestic violence, a first degree felony, punishable by up to 25 years to life or life imprisonment without parole. Count two, aggravated murder, domestic violence, a first degree felony punishable by up to 25 years to life or life in prison without the possibility of parole. Count three, attempted aggravated murder, domestic violence, a first degree felony. Count four, aggravated burglary, domestic violence, a first degree felony. Count five, felony discharge of a firearm, domestic violence, a first degree felony. Count six, felony discharge of a firearm, domestic violence, a first degree felony. Count seven, felony discharge of a firearm, domestic violence, first degree felony. Count eight, felony discharge of a firearm, domestic violence, a first degree felony. Count nine, felony discharge of a firearm, domestic violence, first degree felony. Count 10, felony discharge of a firearm, domestic violence, first degree felony. 
and count 11, felony discharge of a firearm, domestic violence, a third degree felony. You have the right to remain silent. You are currently being held without bail. You also have the right to have an attorney represent you. If you cannot afford an attorney, I will appoint an attorney at no charge to yourself. Are you requesting a court attorney? Yes, I'm requesting a court attorney. Thank you. Do you currently have any money in a checking or savings account? Not enough to cover a lawyer. How much do you have approximately? Probably like twenty dollars at that. Do you have any assets that you could sell that would net you at least five thousand uh, dollars? Yes. Pardon me. Yes. And what 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 assets do you have? I have jewelry. I have. Um, I have my car, so it's a little bit complicated. I would have to. I have. Um, let's see. I have an Apple MacBook Air, the higher end one. Um, I have silverware dishes, like some high end ones. Um, I have electronic uh, computer, high end like computer electronics that were probably about a couple thousand, or at least a thousand. Okay. So I just started Thank you. Thank you. With that information, the court finds you are indigent, and the court appoints Mr. Ryan Stout to represent you. The court is going to set your case for a roll call hearing on Wednesday, July 10th at 2 p.m. Mr. Stout, good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. The court has just appointed you to represent uh, uh, Ms. Bailey. Is there anything uh, that the court needs to take care of at this time? Your Honor, if I could just get a message um, to Ms. Bailey that I will be out to see her shortly uh, today or tomorrow. I would uh, strongly advise her not to talk to anybody about the case and not to make any any comments uh, further today unless asked by the judge, judge directly. But I will be out to see you uh, to discuss things shortly. Thank you. Anything from the state? Uh, Mr. No. Bonzo, you're muted. Right, I'm not able to unmute myself. Um, no, nothing further from the state, Your Honor. I think that will cover it. Thank you. The court will be in recess. Let's go. Mia, yeah. this is your attorney's phone number whenever you get to use the phone. He will be out to see you, though, probably in a day. It seems that the information that came out about the protective order and the what they had heard from the brother is the latest information. I think that's all we have on this one right now, guys. We'll await the next court appearance to find out where they go from here. In the meantime, I'm working on some other news stories for you for our uh, crime news flash. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. And I will talk to you all very soon. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please do not forget to like and subscribe on your way out. And feel free to leave a comment. Have a blessed day.